All right. Good morning. Thanks, Sally, and uh, welcome to everyone. I'm going to start sharing my screen and start our slideshow. Perfect. Great. Thanks, Jane. Just keep me on track with uh, moving things ahead. So the uh, PowerPoint is really, and, and we're really here hoping to um, encourage you to help your clientele accelerate college degrees or certificates with the College Level Examination Program, or CLEP, from the College Board. So as everyone knows, I'm the Executive Director of Michigan for the College Board, and Ginny is our Director for CLEP Outreach. Uh, we'll be your presenters today and happy to answer questions as they come along. So Ginny, why don't you take us through this uh, education survey that we did with respect to uh, you know, COVID-19 and work and how, how folks are viewing their education prospects. Okay, great, thanks. Hello everyone, good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, this was done about uh, during COVID, during the pandemic early on, uh, serving American adults, looking at um, evening the playing field, so looking at adults, uh, with the same age, gender, educational um, attainment, um, ethnicity. Over 21,000 responses were gathered in March through October. So again, March 2020 through October of 2020. And let's share some of those results. When asking um, people affected by the pandemic their um, attitude towards work, 52% uh, agreed that finding a good job is difficult. My opportunities to advance at work are limited. Another finding was um, around thinking about what you may feel your opportunities to advance at work or find a good job may be limited. Please read each of the following. And you'll see here that 46% of the respondents in this survey said the system isn't fair. There aren't great opportunities for people who look like me. 46% uh, said my employer won't provide training, pay for education. Um, again, under, uh, under half said I don't have the right uh, skills or credentials. I don't know where to begin. When asked for the number one reason why personally people in this survey don't believe more education would be worth the cost, um, financial cost, 32%. But again, no real benefit at work. Time away from work is a concern. Um, my confidence about how well it would do, um, the effort, energy required to earn that uh, extra credential. So again, a lot of self-doubt um, concerns, financial concerns. And so that's what we are here today to talk about CLEP and how perhaps it can help solve some of these um, and create a solution for a lot of people looking at going back to education to increase their uh, workforce capacity. Great, thanks, Jenny. So as we as we think about the who that we're, we're targeting um, with, with these programs, we know that over 65% of the jobs in the U.S. will either require a college degree or some kind of stackable credential by 2025, which is just around the corner. And as, as you all know, with working with your clientele, um, the path to degree completion is not often a straight line, but it's, it's rather it's a series of ups and downs, hills and valleys. Um, folks have different opportunities, and then those opportunities dry up. So it's, it's not that straight line. Um, process. And we also know that we have somewhere between 31 and 36 million working age Americans who have some college credit, but they didn't finish to a degree or credential stage. And the other thing that we know is that adult students don't come as, as if they had had no experiences or no life experiences. And, and in fact, they, they want recognition of their experiences, whether they are learning experiences or life experiences that have contributed to um, the skills and, and uh, knowledge that they bring to the workforce. So really, when you when you take a look at um, adults who have education, maybe it's K-12, maybe it's some college, or maybe it's some uh, credentialing, uh, they also, they, they, they learn through their hobbies and interests. Um, they also learn through the work that they've done, if they've been in the military, or if they've participated as a volunteer somewhere, they, they have all of these different experiences. And those experiences can be measured by having some sort of prior learning assessment that can result in either credit or uh, towards a degree or credit towards some kind of uh, credential. And what we're really talking about is, is a mindset shift, uh, especially around you know, colleges and universities and, and credentialing organizations 
rather than they, them saying, we will give you another chance, what adult learners really need is for colleges and universities to shift to the mindset of, will you give us another chance? What we've been doing and working very hard in Michigan for the last um, four years around the college level examination program, we've been working both in the K-12 arena and in the adult learning arena. And we've been working with other partners too. And so we announced this about a year and a half ago, but we have a $1 million commitment from Modern States Education Alliance, another nonprofit that works with the college board. And they will cover the cost of CLEP exams for working age Michiganders, for, for your clientele, for your target audience. So we hope that you will see that CLEP can be part of the solution towards accelerating um, your clientele's path to either degree or credentials and decreasing their cost as well. And we'll talk more about what this Modern States Partnership means for Michigan adult learners as we go on through this, uh, through this presentation. Let's do a quick overview of what the college level examination program is, CLEP. So first of all, the CLEP program offers 34 different exams that cover introductory level college course material. So this provides an opportunity for students of all ages to earn college credit by showing mastery of college level uh, material. So this is that prior learning assessment uh, that adults can use, again, to accelerate towards degree and decrease their costs. What are those 34 exams? Well, we have five broad categories, history and social science, business, composition and literature, science and mathematics, and world languages. And what I often like to point out is that um, certainly folks within the K-12 community are they're familiar with dual credit, with international baccalaureate courses, with advanced placement courses. There is some overlap between CLEP exams and, and those things, but there are also some really unique uh, CLEP exams that are offered, especially if, if you look at the business category, information systems, management, accounting, business law, marketing, those are you know foundational courses for folks who are seeking some sort of, of business credential. Um, we also have uh, you know introduction to psychology and so sociology, but what I like to point out is for folks who want to go into education, we have an introduction to educational psychology and human growth and development. And those are bedrock courses within any kind of education curriculum. Um, as a former mathematics teacher, I like to point out that that one of the great features about CLEP is that there's a very very broad application of science and mathematics. And if you look at the mathematics courses and exams, there are certainly calculus we have and pre-calculus, but more importantly, we have two other courses, college algebra and college mathematics. And those are typically the first year math requirements for non-STEM majors. So CLEP can actually help people use their prior learning or in combination with modern states, um, they can use the learning that they gain through that uh, experience to kind of get over that, what is frequently a barrier to degrees or credentials in terms of, of uh, the mathematics requirements. So just to let you know, the CLEP exams are all accredited by the American Council on Education, ACE, and they have made a recommendation for what scores should result in credit. Uh, but we have faculty committees that oversee test development, they shape the content, they look at the data, they set different exam policies, and we conduct surveys of the faculty who work with us regularly. There's more than 600 faculty who contribute to the development of and the standard setting for CLEP examinations, and there's a rigorous multi-step validation process. So we're very confident that the exam does what it's supposed to do and can result in college credit for adult learners and, and also for K-12 learners. We've been having really good success in the K-12 realm in Michigan and in working with schools and getting students college credit uh, at either a very low cost or free. So what in particular do the exams look like? Well, they are timed computer-based exams, uh, so they can be taken on the computer. And students take the test and they immediately receive their score results, with the exception of two CLEP exams that involve essays. Those are scored by humans and they get those results a short while later. 
exams can be offered whenever a student is ready. It's there, there's if you set yourself up as a CLEP test center, you can offer CLEP exams. You know, uh, as the kids say, twenty four seven. So you can offer them at any time, and students can take a retest if they don't get the score that they want. They can wait 90 days. Perhaps they'll take more instruction through modern states or something else, and they can retest after 90 days. Now, the exams are scored on a scale from 20 to 80, and ACE recommends college credit at 50. There are very, very different college credit uh, uh, policies, and we'll talk about that. And we, we actually have some great documents that we can share with you about Michigan colleges and their CLEP policies so that you can work with your clientele and identify those places that will give them credit and help them move towards a credential or a degree. But over 2,900 colleges and universities award credit for CLEP. And when you take a look at these CLEP credit policies, you'll see that there are some colleges and universities that offer a great deal of credit uh, for uh, acceptable for qualifying scores. The cost of a CLEP exam is $89, but we're gonna talk about how that uh, exam fee can be covered and the test and any administrative fee can actually be free. We have a, a great testimonial in Michigan. We have a, actually a, a state representative in our Michigan House of Representatives. Ben Frederick uh, represents the Owasso area in Michigan. Uh, he was a working father. He'd been away from college for over 10 years and he wanted to earn his bachelor's degree, but he wanted to have minimal costs and he wanted to do this in the shortest amount of time. Uh, Representative Fredericks actually took and passed five CLEP exams. And by using CLEP and some other resources, he was able to shorten his path to a degree by a full year and save around $10,000 in college costs. That's the kind of message that we want to send to your clientele and to you in using CLEP to really not only shorten that path to a degree, but also to decrease college costs. Jane, the next slide is about uh, some of the research studies we've done. I'd, I'd love for you to, to let our folks know, you know, what kind of research we've done around the college level examination program. Yeah, thanks, Ted. Yeah, prior to coming to the College Board, I worked at a college and university campus, and I think one of the concerns is from faculty uh, is how, is based on student success, how is a student who takes that CLEP exam going to do in my, let's say I'm, I'm teaching a sequence course in math, how are they going to do in that next math course if they didn't take my introductory math course. So this study, College Board did this study in 2017 to look at that. So we compared the CLEP test takers to their peers in the subsequent course, again, think of math, and we looked at how the CLEP test takers did compared to the students who took the introductory course at the institution, and we found great news for students, uh, the, especially the CLEP test takers. They did as well or better than their peers in that second course. So I think that really can speak to the rigor of CLEP and um, helps us feel confident that we're um, helping support students by uh, and offering CLEP as an opportunity. Um, the second study we did uh, focused more on um, completion. So we know when students enroll in college, their goal is really to make it through that finish line and earn that degree. Uh, so we looked at, was there any causal effects? So for those students who earned college credit through CLEP, and like Ted had mentioned, CLEP is scored on a scale from 20 to 80. And so we looked at those students who scored that 50, that ACE recommended college credit granting score, and compared them, their finish, to those students who just missed that score, so 49 or lower. Again, great news for students. Uh, those CLEP test takers who earned that score 50 and were enrolled in a two-year um, institution, uh, earning, working towards their associate degree, they were 17% more likely to finish that degree if they had earned college credit through CLEP. Good news also for our students enrolled in a four-year university, um, having earned that college credit score 50 through CLEP, still statistically significant, a 2.6% increase in degree completion. So I think this just helps us um, who are supporting students to feel confident in the ability of CLEP to do so. So, Jenny, why don't you go ahead and, and talk about where we are with respect to Michigan in our participation and, and know that we've been working not only uh, in the adult space for a couple of years now, um, but also we've been working in the K-12 space for about four years. All right. And when I when we share this slide, I just have to I have to clarify a little bit. So we've been working hard over the past couple of years. And as you can see, this looks like a decline. 
Um, so obviously we're all affected by the pandemic and the CLEP program was as well. Um, we'll talk about a new opportunity we have um, for students to take CLEP exams remotely, but that took uh, the College Board and the CLEP program quite a while to institute. Uh, so during the pandemic, CLEP, um, as Ted mentioned, was is traditionally offered at a CLEP test center, digitally on a computer. Many of our test centers were closed due to the pandemic. So um, in March of 20 through the end of the school year and spring tends to be the big CLEP test season. Um, it was drastically reduced. So these numbers really reflect a pandemic effect, not the work that's um, going on or the popularity of CLEP. When we look at who's taking CLEP in Michigan, so students when they register for exam, we ask them what's your current educational level and you'll see it spread out. So about 10% of our test takers are high school students. Uh, we expect that to continue to grow as families are trying to figure out how to do this thing called college more affordably while their uh, students are still in school. But then we see the traditional age students. So whether you're a freshman, um, sophomore, junior, senior, uh, earning the benefits of taking clubs. So 21% of seniors, I really like the state of Michigan. This is a pretty unique. 30% uh, of uh, students in Michigan are uh, freshmen. Uh, we really see CLEP coming in clutch usually when they're seniors. So this is a lot of good work is being done by some advisors at colleges and universities to have CLEP be on that forefront, you know, and make sure that they're meeting their prerequisites so they can um, move forward. I think, and now we're, we're going to talk more specifically about the Modern States Initiative and how that's working um, in Michigan thus far. Thanks, Jenny. So um, we, we've been working with Modern States Education Alliance uh, for quite some time around CLEP. And um, they, they've actually, they're, they're a philanthropic group. They have a mission of making college more affordable. In fact, their, their slogan is freshman year for free. So they'd like to be able to provide enough credit, uh, college credit to folks so that the freshman year of college is free. And so they've put together uh, not only support for exams, but they also put together uh, coursework, uh, free online coursework. We'll talk more about that later in the presentation. But specifically, we went to them and, and asked them to make a, a strong commitment to Michigan adult learners, and they agreed to fund about 10,000 CLEP exams and any associated administrative fee for adult learners in Michigan. So that's a, it's really a commitment of around a million dollars and um, we, we have plenty of those 10,000 uh, tests left. So we have not come even close. Uh, we announced it about a year and a half ago. What we would really love is to partner with Michigan Works locations and use up those 10,000 tests to really save folks money and accelerate their degree attainment. So again, Modern States freshman year for free. You can go to www.modernstates.org and where you'll see, you'll see a, an awful lot of information there, but you can actually peruse all of the courses and you'll see that what Modern States has done is put together a completely free online course that prepares folks to be successful on every single CLEP exam. They even have a course on how to use Modern States. So we really recommend that, that folks take a look at that shorter course on, on how to be successful with modern states take that before they take any of the actual content for clep exams but all of this is free it's all online and folks can use it at their own pace uh, the courses are taught by professors from universities around the country everything is free any materials they're they're all available online the courses are somewhere between 25 and 50 hours of instruction. I know the chemistry course is, is a pretty low one because I had my son take that course. Um, but there's also embedded practice for the CLEP exam within the Modern States courses. So there are not only are lectures and, and content that are delivered online, but there are also assignments and practice exam questions. So Jenny, let's keep our fingers crossed and we'll introduce you to a student not from Michigan, but but somebody who's actually used uh, CLEP exams. Until I got that actual voucher for my first like economics exam, I was like, there's something I'm going to run into where it's just like, OK, this isn't. I'm not sure we are seeing it. There we go. Until I got that actual voucher for my first like economics exam, I was like, there's something I'm going to run into where it's just like, okay, this isn't. 
nobody just pays for exams like that. So many people, the first response when they learn about CLEP and modern states is, it's just too good to be true or it's something special that doesn't apply to them. Really, if there was like one point that I could just drill into everybody's head, like anyone who's like a, a senior or a college student, adult learner, anybody who is ever going to interact with a college, it's that like, if CLEP is an option and it's accepted by your university, like 100% look into it, take some exams. Um, it's really that simple of a process. The first time I signed like my student loan for my freshman year, it was a very just anxiety inducing number. It's like, okay, I'm taking on, you know, a, like fifteen, twenty thousand dollar loan just for my first year, you know, and I'm like, and there's four more years of this. Like, how, how is this going to work? I mean, I, it's always, you know, that was sort of my biggest question is like, is this feasible? Like, what comes next? For me to be able to shave off this time in a way that was affordable really has given me, like, it sort of just let me take a deep breath. I'm in a position where I'm not going to graduate with a whole lot of student debt. So yeah, so I went back to my old gifted teachers class and sort of said like, hey, like, really, like your students, like, really should be looking at this as they're moving forward. Um, and planning for college. And same thing, like I, I went to our school board and I was like, hey, like I just want like, since you guys are like advocates for education, I want to put this on your radar. Um, I wanted to put it on the radar of like my former guidance counselors, like anyone who ever has any sort of like tangential like relationship with education, it's just something that I want them to know about. I love the term uh, serial hobbyist because it's like I'll pick something up and like just kind of run with it and then something else catches my interest. And I'm like, let's do that, too. So like I crocheted um, some T-shirt rugs. I made a uh, dishcloth. I made like a little cat sweater, which I actually hold on a minute. I'm going to show you <laughs> this little sweater for um, the cats. They I don't think liked it as much as I did. Okay, well, hopefully everyone got a chance to meet Miles and uh, and see, you know, saving almost ten thousand dollars on his uh, towards his college degree by using CLEP and and modern states and and the process, you know, as he said, it it, it seems too good to be true, but it it really is true. It it's this simple. You go to modernstates.org and you register for a course. You select one of the courses. Um, you go ahead and, and complete that course. Now, this is the only, you know, when people say, well, what's, what's, what's the but, what's the catch? The only catch is you do have to complete the course and you have to complete all of the practice questions. And then you send an email to Modern States and they will send you a voucher for a CLEP exam. You register for your CLEP exam and you, you, you use the voucher to cover the cost of the exam schedule your testing appointment so you would have to locate a test center and then if that test center charges you an administration fee then you email modern states and they will pay your test administration fee the great thing about talking to all of you and and encouraging you to consider clep and consider perhaps becoming a clep test center for your clientele is that if if you set up a clep test center then you can decide whether or not to keep an administration fee at a minimum or, or no administration fee. And so essentially you'll be able to help your clientele receive college credit or credit towards some, time, some, some type of credential, stackable credential, at free at no cost on their own time. And so it's really, you know, as, as we've talked with, um, you know, K-12 schools, when we first started talking about this four years ago, they had the same, ex you know, same experiences as Miles is like, wait a minute. There's got to be, there's got to be some catch here. What, what are we not getting? What, what is, you know, how can students get three credits, six credits, or, or even more for the cost of a test, or uh, even free if they use modern states? But it truly is, uh, it, it, it truly is that simple. So, uh, Ginny, why don't you go ahead and start talking about uh, CLEP test centers and, and how this works? 
Yeah. So for uh, students who want to take a CLEP exam, like I said, um, primarily our CLEP test centers are uh, available on college and university campuses. They've gone through an application process. Um, so a student can register for their CLEP exam, and then the second step would be to, this is just a little blurb from our College Board website, uh, put in their zip code, 20 mile radius perhaps, and they will come up with a list of uh, what CLEP test centers are available. Um, then it's a matter of scheduling an appointment at that CLEP test center. So across Michigan, I think we're at about 75 CLEP test centers. Uh, 40 of them are now at high schools, have opened up CLEP test centers. But we also have some unique models um, happening in the state of Michigan. Uh, in Utica, uh, the Community Education Center opened up CLEP test center because they wanted to expand CLEP opportunities, not just for the high school folks, but also for um, adults. So those uh, students, even perhaps their parents are hearing about CLEP and thinking, again, I hadn't finished my degree. I'd like to go back and use this opportunity. Again, Modern States is for everyone. So again, by going through the course to relearn the content or to update your knowledge of that um, specific subject, completing the course, answering the practice questions, anyone is really a is able to uh, receive that voucher. So good work out of uh, Utica. And we also had our very first Michigan Works Center, like Ted had mentioned, that um, opened a CLEP test center. So there's no cost involved in opening the CLEP test center. And that really just helps, um, again, students can do the, the work on their own, um, learning the content, but then when it comes to being convenient, uh, go to the Michigan Works Oakland site to take the CLEP exam. It has to be proctored by a live proctor, uh, so staff there have been trained um, in order to do that, and the technical setup is real minimal. I think I have some more. Oh, yep. Let me keep talking. So I did. I did mention that um, CLEP is delivered re remotely, um, starting April fifteenth of this year. So it took us a while to find that because we wanted to make sure that we were um, maintaining the security and validity of the exam. Um, we do have over 2,000 physical CLEP testers worldwide. Uh, we partnered with Proctor Track is the name of our online, and they're the sole provider of any remote proctoring for um, CLEP. So with that, that being said, and you'll see in my next slide why we still are going to continue to support our physical test centers. I think um, students who are not perhaps as comfortable with technology would really like someone else to administer the exam. For students who do have this technology, this is the requirement that you'd have to have in order to take a CLEP exam remotely. Um, you have to have a private room, so no taking a CLEP exam at a coffee shop or with your family around. Uh, you need a Windows-based computer, so it can be a desktop or a laptop. The computer has to have a speaker, a microphone, a webcam. For students who like to take notes as they take a test, um, scratch paper isn't allowed. Uh, our physical test centers provide scratch paper and then take that and shred that. Um, but for students who do like notes, they would have an erasable whiteboard. Upon completion of the exam, those notes, they would wipe those clear, show the um, proctor through the camera at the webcam that that board has been cleared so we can secure that no test items are being removed from that test session. And then students also need an internet connection. So again, while this is a great option um, for students, right now we see about 25% of our test takers are registering for remote proctoring. We know that not all students are gonna have this uh, ability and the, these requirements. So we will continue to support those who would like to open CLEP test centers and offer it um, on campus. And this does have a $30 cost, the remote proctoring does. So again, for students who choose remote proctoring, they sign up for their CLEP exam like everyone else uh, through their exam, then they would choose at that registration point, remote proctoring. They would then um, get an email subsequently from Proctor Track, um, who is gonna ask them to download an app, schedule their appointment so they'll be ready to test on their given day. Let me just talk, I'm going to keep going, Ted, and talk a little bit about some resources that we have for you all and that you can share out with yourselves or even with um, your clients. So again, we talked about Modern States, and uh, again, here's their website. If you, you can, it's a free, it's a MOOC, you can just go online and look at yourself if you want to just get familiar with uh, Modern States. Um, at the College Board site, if you click on the next slide, we also have um, a bunch of free materials as well. So let's, um, for students who are looking at what is this thing called CLEP, uh, at the College Board website here at clep.collegeboard.org, they can become familiar with the 34 subject areas, um, practice some sample questions, you know, and maybe that's what they need to do before they even sign up for a Modern States course. 
uh, one of the challenges or one of the opportunities perhaps with CLEP is to really um, bring the right student in front of the right exam. So when you're looking at modern states in this online learning, you want to make sure that the student has an interest and motivation in that subject area. And you also want to make sure that 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 uh, subject is going to be part of their credential or degree. So working um, closely with um, higher ed institutions to ensure that um, if that student earns the score they, they want, that they indeed will get college credit for that score. So check out the College Board website for that. Ted had mentioned um, CLEP policies. So in the great state of Michigan, um, policies vary by institution. And so we really encourage students to do their due diligence prior to taking the CLEP exam. Again, it's important for students to know um, what subject, what university or colleges accept in CLEP policies, um, what score is required, and what course it's equivalent to. We know that many students don't need help meeting general elective requirements. They're really looking, um, perhaps as Ted said, for that college algebra to meet my math requirement for my non-STEM major. So um, our club policies, this can be found, we have this um, posted at the DOE website. Otherwise, we encourage students to go to their um, individual post-secondary institution of choice. Um, to be honest, sometimes it's a little uh, buried, uh, perhaps, the club policies. So if you're working with the individual and that you don't see a club policy, that doesn't mean they don't have one. Um, it's probably worth a call to their admissions office, um, talking with an advisor uh, to see what that policy is. Um, so Michigan has a broad range of policies and pretty well represented um, with CLEP. Yep, and yep. Jenny, um, we do have this document available, so we can provide that if, if anybody wants uh, a copy of this document. We, we, we try to keep it updated as, as regularly as possible. So the, the document that's available on the Michigan Department of Education's website is current, but you're, you're going to see colleges and universities making changes to their CLEP policies as we go through. Re remember that we have a couple of really important programs here in Michigan, Michigan Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners that are working directly with um, uh, Michigan community colleges and, and working and advocating on, on behalf of adults. Uh, we have also worked with the Michigan Reconnect Navigators and we work very closely with the Labor and Economic Opportunities 60 by 30 uh, group. So we're, we're constantly trying to encourage even more opportunities to use these. Again, we're talking about decreasing time to degree, uh, decreasing the cost of degree, allowing folks to either get credit for their prior learning experiences or perhaps with a, a little help from modern states, uh, they can they can work towards it. But one of the things that you'll notice is that there, there are, as you look at this policy, there are some uh, colleges and universities that have extremely robust CLEP policies, like Oakland University, for instance, um, it's it's kind of in the middle of of uh, all of the four years, but they have a very very generous uh, CLEP credit policy. And then you'll look at some uh, community colleges, like uh, this is Kirtland Community College has a a very strong CLEP policy. Macomb Community College has a very strong CLEP policy. But as Ginny noted. It's not always easy to find these policies if you just go to a, a community college website. So it's always worth a question and we're certainly willing to help. Um, so certainly if, if you have questions, you can uh, contact myself or Ginny and, and we'll work to help you implement CLEP and serve your clients. So let's see, I click here and then click here. Um, Ginny, did you wanna talk about Grand Rapids Community College? I will just, oh, something's happening on my computer. I will just to um, this slide. So students can two ways, you know, my recommendation previously was to have students go to their institution of choice and determine what that um, CLEP policy is. But we do also on the College Board website have this link that students can hit um, search institutional policies, type in their institution of choice. And this is what we have in our website for Grand Rapids Community College. Ted had mentioned that, um, institutions update their policies either regularly or occasionally, or maybe update and forget to tell the college board. So again, just the due diligence to um, research that post-secondary uh, ed educational institution to ensure that the student indeed will earn that college credit. But uh, what I what I do love just about this slide is that you can see that if, if you do go to Grand Rapids Community College, you'll see the actual course that they use if you get a qualifying score in CLEP. So for example, I know it's kind of hard to read, but if you look at the college algebra CLEP exam, 
they tell you exactly what course, Math 110, four credits if you get a qualifying score on the CLEP exam. So it's, it's really nice for uh, your clientele, for adult learners, for, for college and community college students to be able to see that th these are actual courses that they will get credit for if they take and pass a CLEP exam. Indeed. And th these are just other free promotional materials. So I know, um, I'm not sure, um, I know it varies by state how much we are face-to-face. Uh, -face. And so some of these are printed materials. So if you um, are working in an office and think it would be helpful, you, we are happy to deliver these to you at no cost. You can have them in your office. We have the booklet on the left is called Information for Test Takers. So it, it talks about the CLEP exam as a whole, some test taking tips, but then also gives a paragraph description for each of the exams. I think a lot of times students need some um, guidance or some a push perhaps to identify. You know, we, we say at the College Board that CLEP is for everyone and it really can be, but it's having those conversations to see which CLEP exam fits that individual best. So that information for test takers, it's, it's a printed booklet. Uh, you can order those in bulk and again, no cost, we'll ship those to, to you. So again, just go to our website at club.org. We have brochures, we have posters, we have email templates. So again, free promotional materials. So if you're inclined um, to please uh, check out our website and order those and we'd be happy to get those into the hands, into your hands and you can pass them on to your clients. Jenny, I know that you had a small supply of the CLEP uh, study books. I don't know whether we have that on a slide, but do you want to just talk a little bit about that? I do. And so my computer is resting on one right now. So they're generally for <laughs> for purchase um, for $24.99, but I do have um, the 2021. We just came out with our 2022 official study guides. And what that is, is that's a practice exam in all 34 CLEP subjects. So I know when I was a counselor, I, I kept it on my desk, put my name in permanent marker, but I borrowed it out to students who were looking at CLEP and they wanted to have um, more experience with taking a practice exam. So if you would like one, one of those, um, I'm going to type in the chat my email. So just shoot me an email and I would just need your physical mailing address. And again, no cost, I'd ship that out to you um, this week. And again, so that's the, really the 2021 week. book, which is, which is yeah. now being replaced by the 2022 that you can order, but if you want a free copy, just send Ginny an email and she will uh, mail that out to you. For sure. Thank you. So, you know, as, as Ginny said, you know, we've been, we've been talking about our uh, CLEP websites. We actually have a specific Michigan website that talks about, you know, uh, the educator and student resources. It talks about how, what what is the application for opening a CLEP test center and and how to order CLEP vouchers if you're going to do you know a, a test center and have the vouchers uh, yourself? Uh, but again, with modern states, you would be getting those uh, test vouchers uh, through modern states for free. Um, and then we have uh, a, a lot of information on Michigan's uh, labor and economic opportunity website, the Michigan.gov forward slash Leo. And you can actually sign up for uh, monthly CLEP information, um, which we would love to have you have you join us. So we can open it up, and, and I'm going to leave this slide up for a bit so that you have our email addresses. And I know Jenny put hers uh, in the chat. I will put mine in the chat as well. Um, but if you would like to ask a question, um, feel free to either put it into the, the Q&A or um, I don't know how that works, Sally. Can they unmute and, and just ask a question? So there is an option for them to request uh, access to share their video and audio and I can grant that to them if they wanna physically ask a question. We can only have five more people on at a time, but I think if we did one at a time, that would be okay. So I know that we have a couple of folks from Oakland County. I'd love if, if they would um, get on and, and get unmuted and maybe share their experience in setting up the CLEP Test Center because I think that's, um, for all the folks who are Michigan Works uh, directors or representing different centers, I think it'd be helpful for them to learn about the process if that's possible.
There's Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome. Hi, how are you? I wasn't even sure if I could do this or not, but it, I guess it worked out okay. Nice to see you all. Come crash our party. Yes. Well, thanks. Um, thanks for mentioning Oakland. That's awesome. Um, so I, I really want to give a, a shout out to our, our staff at our service centers at our um, six Michigan Works locations. I think particularly the Southfield Michigan Works office was a real go-getter um, on this. You know, we had uh, heard about this opportunity um, through the state and through the Michigan Works Association and decided to, to give it a shot um, locally in Oakland County. We've set our um, own educational goal. So, um, you know, the governor's 60 by 30 initiative in Oakland County, we are already at 61%. So setting a 60 by 30 goal wasn't very ambitious. So we've set the Oakland 80 goal, which is to have 80% of our Oakland County residents that are working age uh, have an industry recognized credential or degree by 2030. Uh, and so as part of this Oakland 80 effort was, you know, how do we get more individuals enrolled in post-secondary education? How do we get more individuals to complete post-secondary education? And how do we get more um, adults with some college, no degree to complete? And then, you know, how do we utilize the Michigan work system more effectively around credentials and certificates? So um, the, the CLEP testing centers was one of the first ways that we could um, start working towards that goal. So we're, we're very early on in the process, but we're thrilled to be a part of it. The team shared with me that it was very easy to do. It didn't cost anything. And, you know, we're still kind of, you know, figuring out how we can utilize it more, but um, we're just thrilled to partner with all of you. And if we can help other Michigan Works agencies join the CLEP testing team, just let us know. And thanks for letting me crash your party. Great. Thanks, Jennifer. Appreciate that. Thank testimonial. you. It's, you know, we've actually had, um, you know, we, we actually had Ben Fredericks do a video for us as well. And um, he's very passionate about uh, providing opportunities, not only for his constituents, but for, for all adult learners. And I, I think it's important to note that, you know, Michigan really is on the forefront um, with what the legislature and the governor have done to fund Michigan Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners. Um, but it's really important, I think, that we focus on, especially the needs of adult learners. I, I say this all the time, I spent my life working in K-12, and it's great to work in K-12 and get kids opportunities for college credit, and maybe on a path towards a degree. But one of the things we have to realize is that every time we graduate a high school student, and, and maybe they're on a path to a degree, they're adding both to the numerator and the denominator of the 60 by 30 computation. So if you want 60% of your population by 2030, when, when you work in the K-12 region, you're, you're actually adding to that numerator. Uh, so it's harder to get to the 60%. We really need to focus on the needs of adult learners um, and help them get to either some sort of credential for durable employment or a degree if that's what they're seeking. And that's really you know the impetus behind all of this. We are so grateful that modern states recognized the importance of the work with us and uh, it, actually, they, they came up with the idea and, and worked with us on the million dollars before the funding for uh, Michigan Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners came out. So we, we've actually been hoping to get uh, engaged. And, and when the opportunity came up to present to uh, the Michigan Works directors and to work with, with all of you, we were very excited. We think it's a perfect match. All right, I see that we're in time. So you have contact information. So if you have club questions moving forward, please feel free to reach out at any time. If you're like me, sometimes you think it's a question next week or next month. Uh, so we're around. So please reach out. We're happy to help. Thanks for your time today.